Hey everybody, it's Chris Eads, known online as Wootini, here with another Gay Gamer video podcast. Um, as you can see, I am wearing my uh, Princess Peach tank top, uh, and it's for women, which is why it's so thin. Um, but it's Gay Pride, and I am getting ready to, this afternoon, uh, march with the Gay Geeks of New York in the New York City Pride March. So I'm wearing, I'm going for comfort over cosplay this year. And I'm just going to wear my nice Princess Peach tank top because it's really hot and sunny out. And I've got my uh, rainbow bracelet that my niece made for me. Um, and because I wasn't going to march this year, I'm feeling lazy. But then the weather cleared up and I'm like, oh, there goes that excuse. And I realized that this is one of those times when I want to march because I want to be part of this because of what's going on in the world today. And I realized that since my marching was going to be uh, uh, somewhat political, uh, I came up with an idea for a sign. So I literally just ran to the art store up the street and got a piece of poster board and some big thick markers. And I made my sign that says, Cheetos belong in your belly, not in the White House. Um, and I'm going to march with that, so. Uh, in gaming news, <laughs> since this is a gaming podcast, um, I got the gay out of the way, now we'll do the gaming. Um, big week, I finished Horizon Zero Dawn. Very exciting. Um, it's funny, because like, I can tell when I'm going to finish a game and when I'm not, and Horizon was so good, like the story was so interesting that I would fight my way through any number of side quests just to get to the ending of this game. And in fact, it's the kind of game where I wouldn't bother with the side quests because I'd want to just do the story missions and finish it if I was feeling like it was taking too long. Um, other games that are like these kinds of open world games like this, the story tends to be secondary to the experience of running around and doing the things that you can do. But here, I just found the story so, so good. It was really solid. Like, I would watch a movie of this. Um, and in fact, I kind of like the story so much that while I'm excited for this DLC that's coming later this fall, I think, um, I will totally buy that and play it to get more adventures with Aloy. But I am wary of uh, a sequel. Which, they're clearly going to do a sequel, because it did gangbusters, it sold through the roof, it's like their most popular new IP, so, um, they're going to be a sequel, and I'm just, I'm hoping that they can continue to have an interesting story, because now that everything's been revealed, I'm just like, okay, what's next? And you have to come up with something really good to pin a sequel on, and have more interesting revelations and that sort of thing, because if it's just more of the same, that's not going to work. Um... But I was thoroughly impressed by Horizon Zero Dawn. Um, I had read some reviews that said that you get bogged down in side quests and the errands and, and that sort of thing, and it gets really frustrating. And like this reviewer was like, I would go someplace and they'd want me to do these errands, and they all ended up being like the same thing, so I just stopped doing it because it got so repetitive. And so I thought in my mind it was like in an Elder Scrolls game or something where people just sort of randomly, hey, can you get me these herbs? Or, hey, can you kill this monster for me? You know, my there's rats in my basement or whatever. And I had thought that every village, that every settlement that you would go to would be these randomly generated extra quests, in addition to the main quests and the side quests. It would be these randomly generated errands. But there weren't. There were errands, which are like side quests, but I don't know why they were separated into... It's like you had your main quest, then your side quest, and then your errands. I guess they were, like, less important. I did all of them anyway, though, um, for the experience, you understand. Um, but at no point did I feel like I was getting bogged down in side quests and other things. I mean, I did go around and collect all of the things that I needed to collect, you know, A, for the trophies, and B, for the experience. But I never felt bogged down. Um, and in fact, uh, once I reached the level 50... Uh, got the trophy for reaching level 50, which, again, it was on a stupid cutscene, so I get this 
dopey... I did it at one of the hunting grounds, so I got a dopey idiot as my trophy screenshot, which is just... This game takes terrible trophy screenshots. Twice it did black screens, because it did it in between a cutscene and the game. And it would screenshot the black screen of the transition. Anyway, um, I was super impressed with myself for reaching level 50, but then I noticed that it never got... you stopped earning experience. So I was like, oh, well then, now that I'm at 50, I might as well just do the end of the game, because there's no point in doing the extra side quest. Also, at that point, the only side quests that I had left were the, um, the hunting grounds, which I did three of the hunting grounds thinking that was it, but then I realized there were five, and I'm like, ugh. And I went to one of the other two, and it was like, the the things you had to do with the hunting grounds to earn the medals was like, I was like, oh, that's going to be a lot of work, and I don't really feel like doing it. And there's really no point in doing it because it's not going to get me any more experience to help me level up before the end of the game. All it's going to do is get me the trophy, and I'm not that... I don't care so much about the trophies. Um, like, I might go back... I'm not going back. I don't even know why I said that I might go back, because I'm clearly not going back. Um... I also liked in Horizon Zero Dawn that when you got a new weapon, it unlocked like a mini side quest where you could earn experience for using that weapon. Um, so like when you get a certain bow, it's like, okay, use this bow to freeze three machines. And when you do that, you then earn the experience points. Um, and I like that. It's, an, it's a great gameplay addition. I hardly ever did it, though, because you have to, basically, you have to activate that as your side quest, then go do it. It doesn't just automatically happen, because I did a lot of those things in just general gameplay, but you have to actually activate that side quest in order to earn the experience points. And that was frustrating, because I'm just like, ugh, who has time? So I ended up not doing a bunch of them, because I didn't need the experience points. Um, and I got a little concerned when I started towards the end game, like like the last three main missions, the first one, when you return home, and it's crazy, and it was like so hard, and I'm just like, this is not cool, like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to finish this, because a friend of mine, I think on Twitter, had said something about how, aside from a couple difficulty spikes, he liked Horizon, um, he, you know, wishes he was better at games, and I wish I was better at games too, so I got a little nervous, and I was like, oh my god, this isn't good, I'm not going to be able to finish this. But, thankfully, being an open-world game, I was able to, like, use the open world to my advantage and figure out a way to do what I needed to do uh, that worked for me. Um, and then once I got past that section, everything else was fine. Um, like, giant machines, and I'm, like, taking them down, and it's not a problem. So, um, the actual end game after that point... Like, there was, like, this little bit of a difficulty spike, but I got through it, and then the rest of the game was fine, and I finished it no problem, and I was super excited, and I was like, yay! In fact, I think I finished the final battle without dying once. So, yay me. Um, and of course now, that frees me up to play Life is Strange, which I had downloaded for free on PlayStation Plus the other week, but this past week has been very stressful for me, so I wasn't really in the mood. And I just basically was like, you know what, I need to just chillax, so I would come home from a stressful day of work, and I just put on No Man's Sky, because I needed something where I didn't have to think. So I just put on No Man's Sky, floated around, visited some planets, took some pretty pictures of the scenery, saw some weird, interesting dogs that walk on their hind legs, it's kind of fun. Um, and that was nice and relaxing. I still love No Man's Sky. Uh, it's the kind of game that I will always go back to. Um, and also, um, Nintendo uh, released Ever Oasis, which, when I saw the original trailer in a Nintendo Direct, like, months and months and months ago, I was like, oh, that looks really good. Um, and I know people seem to like it, it's getting good reviews, but I cannot justify the purchase of Ever Oasis, because I never finished Popo LaCroix on my 3DS. So, I don't feel like that's appropriate. You know, why should I go and spend money on a game when I didn't finish the game that I spent money on already? Also, I kind of wish that they wouldn't put things out on 3DS anymore, because 
I don't like carrying my 3DS and my Switch in my bag. So I would like it, but I'm going to have to do that until they put Animal Crossing out on the Switch, which unfortunately they still have said nothing about. So once Animal Crossing is on the Switch, I can finally just retire my 3DS. Though I love it and I'm going to miss the 3D, I just want to carry around one machine. Is that too much to ask? I'm lazy. But I have to go now because I have to go march and march for miles and miles and miles down Fifth Avenue with my friends. So, uh, so much for being lazy. Come back next week if I haven't died from heat stroke. Bye! <laughs>